It is October 2nd. One wild card game is in the books and one is about to get going tonight. Let's talk all about them. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining us for another another episode of Talking Baseball on this fine Wednesday morning, recording at 10 o'clock, getting our bearings going. It's 8 o'clock for Jake, who is in Denver. This episode of Talking Baseball is sponsored by a bunch of great people. Raymond Torres, Scott Siebert. Jules Hales, I always like to name Jules, not sure why. Benjamin Slate, Ooh, Ben Slate, that's a power name. Mr. Slate, wow, Mr. Slate is like a bad guy in a comic book. That's crazy. Connor Armheim, old friend, and then Istanfil, Istanfil. No way I got that right, but I tried my hardest and I did my best. And those are our most recent Patreon sponsors. They get to watch live as we do these and maybe chat with us in the chat if they uh, would like to. And they also get a chance to win a jersey each month. Jake, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning, James. I'm doing well. Um, Good to see your smiling face. It's a great night for baseball. Um, For our Milwaukee fans and listeners, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, welcome to the wild card. There's no way uh, they're listening. And for, yeah, that's actually a great call. So, all right, go screw you, Milwaukee. Tune in. Uh, no. And, uh, for our Nationals fans that are listening, uh, sorry you had to endure eight innings of that. Yeah, uh, I was going to say that there's the Nationals fans didn't really have a fun night. <laughs> they almost got it worse than the Brewers. <laughs> The Brewers was kind of a band-aid. They they had their guy in the situation, and they had to lead the whole game, and then it was the rug got taken out from under them. Man, it was crazy. What was your situation watching the game? You went to a bar? So uh, yesterday I, I made a promise to the listeners that I would have a blackout game. I wasn't actually going to blackout. On I thought Tuesday you were going to go live and do it. I would live on what? Like that was my That was my problem. Just be active like... I mean, like, I was being—I was live on Twitter. I was—I was going the whole night, but yeah, I didn't didn't really have the forum for that. But uh, yeah, it was a—it was a good time in gym leading up to the game. And I—I I don't know if we want to—I guess we could dive not fully into it, but leading up to the game, because you and I had talked earlier that day, and we both kind of landed on the same page where it's better for baseball if the Nationals win this game. Um, they would be a—they're gonna. They are going to be a really tough out in the playoffs uh, if they won that game, which they did. And the Brewers, yeah, they were a fun story, and they're they've been fighting hard, and they're pesky, and you know, no Yelich, obviously. The closer I got to game time, I was rooting Brew Crew, man. I I was feeling it. I was like, yeah, let's pass the torch. Um, you know, the Nats, because what got me was Nats fans were thinking the same thing. Nats fans were rubbing their hands going, we win this. I think we're looking good. And I just like the Brewers mentality. And then I was going to link up with, uh, cause I, I was going to drink during this game. So I linked up with our friend Jeff, who is a Brewers fan. So then it felt like a perfect storm. We went to a bar called Badgers, a big Wisconsin sports bar in Denver and, uh, man, it was just awesome. The intensity of every pitch, uh, when the yes man hits that home run, it's just like, whoa, we are in it now. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was awesome until, uh, until the end. And I snuck out of Badgers pretty quick, but, uh, but it was, I, great, great baseball game. How, uh, what, how, how did, how'd the game go for you, James? I mean, it was pretty good. I was just sitting here enjoying it. Uh, Twitter was down, so I couldn't post GIFs or videos. That was pretty frustrating. Right. For a while, it took me a while to realize it was down for everyone, even like MLB. Bad timing, Twitter. Come on, Twitter. Baseball needs this. I <laughs> know why, because TBS was being ruth- ruthless. They were hunting down the most miserable fans. Yeah, that was, that was pretty funny. 
like just ruthless. I mean, I had to share them. I was obligated to because they're hilarious, and I felt for them. I I felt for Nationals fans. People thought I was making fun of them. I was like, no, I've been there. 2017 wild card game. I've been through all these emotions. The release of winning is amazing. For Brewers fans, when they open up three nothing in the second inning, like that release is amazing. Wild card game's a motherfucker, man. No one wins. You get you may get to move on, but you didn't like win the day. As a fan of one of those two teams, it's miserable. At from the outside, I enjoyed it yeah. heavily. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's 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 perfect. I, a lot of people complain because it's crazy to have a, a, a hundred and sixty season to come down to one game, but it is the best way to start the postseason. Just game seven intensity right away. And for casual fans, it's like, whoa, wait, what? This is insane. Yeah, and I had I, I will say this one one of the f- fun parts of bopping around a little bit last night was getting I, I I did get some secondary fan reactions and stuff and I I had one one moment that I liked a lot there was a person at the bar um they turned to the the person they were with at the bar and they they clearly were there for them <laughs> the the person person came in in all sorts of Milwaukee garb the other person was clearly just at a bar <laughs> looking at screens and uh during the Soto at bat you saw the light bulb go off over their head and they turned to their friend and they go so wait this is kind of like guy versus guy deciding the game and they were like yeah <laughs> so <laughs> I felt bad for the person who had to answer because their heartstrings were on the line um and then they were like oh that's pretty cool so I was like all right we got a baseball light bulb going off. I love that. And then I heard another guy that was like, oh, they played too many games. And I was like, hold me back, Jeff. Hold me back. Um, <laughs> what did you think of the actual gameplay? I mean, Scherzer came out and he didn't really have duty. Like, I mean, he didn't have his A plus stuff. His B stuff is, is still rather good, but he was missing his fast. Well, there were some pitches he was just straight yanking. And I loved, <laughs> dude, this is going to, Sounds so crazy, but I put in my notes like, what a leadoff at bat by Trent Grisham to take the walk. Couple close pitches low. Scherzer, first playoff bat. Like, big moment for the rookie. We talked about this, the rookie nerves. And I was like, oh, damn, he he came, overcame him, got the walk. We joked about how a walk is a rally in Joe's McFly's quote, walk is a rally in the playoffs. And then because Scherzer was wild and then fell behind 1-0, uh, to Grand Hall. Did he fall behind 1-0? Um, in my was head, it, it was pitch the, the, f- the first pitch. Yeah, first pitch fastball. So because yeah. because Scherzer walked Grisham, Grand Hall's like, well, I bet he's coming with a strike because he doesn't want to fall behind in the count again. And just, bam, what a sucker punch for Nationals fans right away. And then, uh, and then what? The next inning, uh, Thames got, uh, is it Thames? I don't know what it is. Thames clipped them. We pronounced um, like every brewer's name wrong last episode. Yeah, yeah. We're uh, if if you're new, a hey, thank you. Leave, leave a five star. Maybe you like it. Um, and yeah, we're not a names podcast. We're gonna get it wrong. It might be a Tim's thing. I, no, I, I thought it was Thames, but I I think it's uh, tough to say. You'll you'll hear us pronounce it every single way the rest of this episode. His home run was pretty impressive because it was like curveball slider for strike one. Or, but he, he missed, but that's what Scherzer threw. And then he tried to bring the curveball back in, like behind in the count. He didn't go fastball. Because I thought he'd go fastball and he'd be sitting fastball again, just like Grandal. But no, he was he got the slider. Tames. Being told it's Tames. It's great. And it you're right. It was it it wasn't a terrible off speed pitch. He I mean he hit a nice off speed pitch off Scherzer. Um and <laughs> this was I also did hear this at the bar that had to get me held back. I heard the baseball players aren't athletes thing. Marcus Thames. Whoo. That dude is roped up. Um, oh. Everyone was t- tagging me on Twitter like, whoa, Jakey Thames. And I was like, well, come on, guys. Let's enjoy the game. Um, <laughs> um, is the wild card game, is these, are these on baseball reference yet? Um, I'm looking at the ESPN box score. I did, um, Jim, I, I don't know if you want it or not. I did write a burn. You did? I did. 
This is uh, the Talking Baseball crew doesn't know about Burns. They are uh, a Talking Yanks staple. It's a little recap of the game. Well, we should have went into this right away. Here, let me get the music up. All right, Jake, burn the wild card game for us. On your mark, get set. Burn. Win or go home in the nation's capital as the beer makers face the Nats with Mad Max Scherzer on the mound and could Milwaukee would rough him up as they sent Brandon to the mound. Everyone in D.C. has their yes men. Yasmani Grandal, a two-run yacker to right. The crowd is stunned. Welcome to the wild card, D.C. 2-0 Nats. Scratch that 3 nothing as they can't tame Marcus. Oh, he big strong. Washington would have to turn things around quick. Turn around. Trey's homer just made it a little bit closer, but the Nats still need more runs. 3-1 after 3. Scherzer settled in and passed it to Strasburg, who got out of a big, big double play in the 6. And Mama, now here comes that man. Haterade as Josh comes in for the Brewers. And oh no, we've got some action. Hit by pitch. Ryan Zimmerman, the old Nats legend. He breaks his bat, shatters the single. Rendon walks. Hater didn't want him. And Jim, you probably didn't know this. The kid is only 20 years old. Juan Soto lines one to right. One run will score. Grisham with the, oh no. And it's like a nightmare book by John Gresham. The ball goes off his glove. Three runs will score. Nats win just like that. Hudson with the save. Washington advances. Damn, you got a John Grisham reference in there. You like that? Yeah, I like some of his books. I went through a big phase. Yeah, I feel like, I, I don't know, my mom and sister went through the Grisham phase. I never read a single one. Boy, you've read Mr. Popper's Penguins, and that's it. It's a good book. Got to read it. Dude, it was a good game. That was a good burn. Makes me remember how how fun this game was. Yeah, I'm trying to. Um, Were you shocked how long they rode Scherzer? Because he didn't look good. And then when when he got into trouble in the fourth inning, I was like, why is he still out there? He's straight yanking fastballs. And yeah, they they stuck to their guns, and that did surprise me, Jim. Um, and I guess. I guess they had to make a conscious decision before the game, right? They had to go into this game saying, we're going to ride Max. Like, we're not going to treat him. We're not going to treat him as Bob, uh, Brandon Woodruff. We kept calling him Bob Woodruff, the old reporter. Um, we're not going to treat him like Brandon Woodruff, who looked great, by the way. But if Woodruff got into trouble in the second inning, say, they would have pulled the plug because that's how Milwaukee operates. The Nats made a conscious decision that they were going to go Scherzer to Strasburg to essentially try to complete the game. I was a little surprised they went to Hudson, but Hudson ended up looking great. Um, left Doolittle in the pin. I thought that might become a controversy. They they left their neck out there a little bit if, if Doolittle didn't get a chance to come in. But Hudson looked good. And yeah, man, Scherzer, it, they decided to let him go, and it kind of paid off. He settled in a little bit. The crowd got behind Scherzer. The fifth inning is what I meant, sorry. When he yeah. walked Shaw, I was like, this bad. That was a jaw-dropping moment because Shaw has been so awful this season that Scherzer walked him. And that was an overlying kind of theme of this game where uh, Travis Shaw draws a big walk against Scherzer and you're like, what? He had a one of the worst <laughs> like seasons off of a 30 homer season ever. Um, how good did Drew Pomeranz look? What? Dude, the Brewers had a strategy. I wonder if the Dodgers had this in mind already or if they adopt it now to attack the Nationals with high heat. Like Woodruff yeah. came out fucking looking amazing. He Woodruff looked like Strasburg. <laughs> yeah, it was strong. He looked like, like Lance Lynn in his prime, just high fastballs. Yeah. Did you see his pitch mix at one point? When he was 26 mm -hmm. pitches in, 22 of them were fastballs, two sliders, two change, something like that. It was definitely 22 of 26 pitches were fastballs. They were gearing up. And then when Pomerantz came in, his at-bat versus, I think, Juan Soto 
was high fastball, high changeup to get the strikeout. And it was like, this is their strategy, I guess. I wonder if as the Nats move on, the Dodgers pick up that same thing with just high heat. And I mean, it's it's been a little bit of the evolution of baseball this season with the looping swings. I feel I feel like even two years ago, Jim, that the low and away slider felt like it was every other pitch. I mean, the Lance McCullers game, didn't he throw... 17 sliders in a row or whatever the number ended up landing at. We're going to see a little bit of that second half of this show. We are. We are with, with, the, with the later game. But there, there's definitely been a transition in, in baseball that I think the best pitch in baseball right now is an up and in fastball. There's not many guys that can handle it. The guys that can are the guys that were in the running for the batting title. DJ LeMahieu, Michael Brantley, guys like that. Um, they feasted on him because they just slapped him the other way for a single or double where these power hitters trying to hit home runs couldn't touch him. Um, All right, let's, get to, uh, let's get to the eighth inning, the fall apart yes. inning. There's a lot to discuss, and then we are. The second half of the show will be the AL wildcard preview. So, haters in. Yeah. They're asking him to get two innings. And here's where Hater looked, even with the error, and the hit by pitch, Hader wasn't getting you two innings in this game. It just didn't look like he could. But he strikes yeah. out Victor Robles for, to lead it off, and you're like, all right, two outs to go, move on to the next inning. Then Michael Taylor with a controversial hit by pitch. Um, I'm sure Brewers fans are still very upset by this. I haven't, I haven't reached out into the Brewers fans' lives, but it's pretty close. They go to replay. What are, what are your thoughts? Like, o- open thoughts on it. When you go to replay and you slow it down that much and it's still not you, I still can't say 100% that hit the bat first. What do we do? Like, what do we do? Yeah. Hands up. Like you need like, you know, technology you need. There's kind of crazy. They called it a hit by pitch. They probably go by sound. It definitely hit his hand. Did it hit the bat like a smidge, like a slight, slight, slight second earlier? Maybe, but I, I, I think if you're like, no, it definitely. I think you're just, you're just, right. you're just it's, throwing down to throw down. You don't definitely know a thing. If you have a definite stance, you're a fan of one of the teams, or you had money on the game. That's that's the only tweener. Because yeah, I mean, to or me, you it, operate it, it was, by definites. Like some people just operate like they can't understand. Right. I I mean it. It just. It was at the same time, um, and again, this I I I started writing one of my, but it kind of came it came off snooty. But it's my whole thing. If you're a baseball fan, and you just rip on umpires all the time, go take the umpire test. Read the book, because that's the kind of crap that happens in this game. <laughs> that it's like what. Uh, okay, hit by pitch, and it hits the hand and the bat at the same time. And action. You make that decision on a national stage. That's insane. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, <laughs> it kind of comes back to what's the logical thing, and it's like it hit his hand and the bat. I, I think that's a hit by pitch. I, I think the call's kind of right. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. So the the – Nationals kind of had an, a good pinch hitting strategy here. So they had Zimmerman in the on deck circle when Robles was up. He strikes out. So I'm guessing their thinking is okay, we don't, if, if uh, Victor Robles got on, okay, let's put in, you know, more of a power hitter or whatever. But he didn't. So they switched to pinch hitter and they go to Michael Taylor. I'm guessing they want speed on the bases or something or, you know, uh, so he gets hit by pitch. Trey Turner get, strikes out. Now there's two outs, bat on first, and Zimmerman takes the like 97 fastball inside, breaks his bat, total bloop shot, great base running by Taylor to go first to third on it. And I don't know if you watched the TBS after show. I doubt, I doubt you did if you were at the bar and stuff. But Sheffield, Gary Sheffield and someone else. Him and Rollins were brawling. I did, I did watch this. They were going back and forth forever yeah. on if Kane should have thrown to third to get uh, Michael Taylor out. In my breakdown, I paused it. He could have had him. He could have had him. And it's a really good debate about a really small aspect of baseball because like, yeah. I think casual fans that were tuning in the TBS are like, what are they talking about? Or maybe they were into it. Basically, 
uh, um, Zimmerman the tying run. So he's really all that matters. So keeping him at first yeah. is more important than going for that out at third. Because if you go to third to get that out and you don't, he can Zimmerman can easily trail to second, and now you got him on second base. I mean, so at that moment, it's an interesting call. Like if he gunned it to third and got the out, that would have been the best case. But there is a lot of logic that says don't let that runner on first get to second. Yeah, and I, I right now my my brain's spinning on it because I did see them them going at it. And it's kind of fun. Knock yourself out, guys. Um, but I there's so many things in play here because it's okay. Can Kane get him if he could have? Yeah, I mean that would have been unbelievable. The stadium would have erupted and it would be a or the stadium would have went silent and yeah. be a play, it'd be a play known forever uh, in, for Milwaukee fans. On the other side of it, I, I guess where I think I lean throw the ball, and and maybe this is a little being able to look back, but Rendon was coming up, and with how good Hater is versus lefties, in my head, it seems like Rendon was going to get walked anyways. Um it, Hater was attacking him to a degree, and then he totally wasn't. Um, so I don't know. I guess with that in mind, like you want Hater versus Soto. You Kane want doesn't one of the have best all that left in his head, though. I know, but that's that's what I'm sh- that's what I'm saying. That's how crazy this is, and that's how the depths of baseball go. But yeah, it's impossible for Lorenzo Kane to be thinking of that on the fly. Josh Hader's next approach against Rendon. Yet at the same time, you should kind of know who's coming up because that does change the approach a little bit. I, I think this debate, you could go in circles all day. <laughs> I think it's interesting. It's good. Yeah. Anyway, he doesn't throw to third. That means it's first and third. Uh, they pinch run for Zimmerman. Rendon gets walked. 3-2 pitch goes to 3-2. Walk him, bases loaded, two outs, Juan Soto versus Josh Hader. A single ties the game, and this is the game, this at bat. When you can boil down a game to one at bat, it's fucking awesome. 1-1 one, one count, Soto turns on a fastball. Grisham misplays it, which, is, which allows Rendon to score from first to take the lead. Hudson comes in, gets three outs, and that's the ball game, Jake, just like fucking that. And and that's what uh, uh so a, a couple things because we we went through we went through there's so much at the end of this game a Ryan Zimmerman I mean the pride of the Nationals organization he has like every Nationals team record he sits on the bench before the game because Howie Kendrick has been playing so well he comes out he pinch hits first hater and just like. Uh, there's something beautiful about a shattered bat single, <laughs> and he, uh, it's like the definition of survival as a hitter. <laughs> like that's the definition of I will do anything to get this hit, and Zimmerman does it. Um, and then Soto, man, I mean the kid, and he he's just special. And I I, I tweeted it right before his at bat. I just said be special, dude, and he is. Um, and everyone was tweeting out the the lefty numbers against Hater. Um, it's it's a game of odds and statistics, but guess what? Uh, that's why we love it, because stuff like that happens. It's incredible. And yeah, Jim, I, we, we kind of breezed over it in the ninth. Hudson comes in. Um, he gets Thames. Lorenzo Cain signals. Uh, Lorenzo Cain gets on base, and he's a threat. Um, Arcia follows out, and then they have Gamble. And this is where I didn't know enough about the Washington bullpen because Gamble's a lefty. He's not a major threat, but he's a solid ball player. And Doolittle's loose. I was sitting there like, hey, if Gamble clips Hudson here, is are, are the Nationals going to get chewed out for not going to Doolittle? Because that would have been lefty on lefty. I don't know. Only Gamble's as much as a threat. You got to trust your dudes there. Yeah. Uh, the Orlando Arcia foul uh, foul out on the first pitch of the at bat. Crushing. That would drive me fucking insane if I was a fan. Crushing. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm looking where that pitch was. The pitch was middle middle. Um, that's such a baseball mind fuck. Because <laughs> if 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 Arcia drives that ball into the gap, you say, "Wow, Arcia was up there." 
His first pitch, he wasn't taken. He drives it, and then he fouls up, and you're like, what are you doing? See a pitch, man. See a pitch. Yeah. Uh, how bad do you feel for Grisham? Last topic before we uh, bounce out of this one. I obviously feel bad. Um, this uh, this is a you and me thing that we now share with the world, Jimmy, but you know uh, that playing the outfield is pretty near and dear to my heart, more so center field, but – I uh, I used to play outfield like a recluse back in the day. Probably still would and break everything for a second. And I mean, he's a rookie. He's a kid. He's trying to get everything he can into a throw home uh, to try to make a heroic play. And he it takes kind of a funny hop and goes off his glove. He's the dude that's out there for Yelich. Um, I don't even think it went off his glove. He straight up missed it. He nicked it. He, he nicked it. Um, but uh, it's it's excruciating. It's excruciating. And I, I think the, the biggest thing for him is he, he is a pretty big-time prospect. He was a top 100 prospect. Uh, he came up and he was solid for the Nats. And uh, I, I don't know. There's there's two things you could do after something like that. You just... <laughs> no, he straight up nep- just misses it. It's you really, you it, never you never make contact with a baseball again, and you you're that's the end of your baseball career, or you hunker down and you grind and you grind and you grind. And I think he's a young kid with a lot of potential. Um, unfortunately, I think this will make him better in the long run, but it's uh it sucks. It's it's something you'll you'll never forget. He was trying to like come around the ball so that where he reached it, he was going to third base or second base, you know. So like he didn't run right at the ball, and the ball I think was faster than he went because it just went to his right as he was trying to do a little like peel, and just straight up it goes right under his glove. It's pretty brutal. He nicked it. I'm watching it right now. I'm watching it right now. I mean, I tweeted know. us. Did did Grisham clip that ball at John Boy at Talking Jake? Yeah, I'm going frame by frame. I mean, if he clipped it, it's not like it hit his. Gl- he missed it. I mean, maybe like a centimeter of clip, but yeah, I don't even it's clipping that. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's all it's a flat out whiff. He didn't get the ball. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the biggest thing. He didn't get it. I think he missed it altogether. But I I think if he doesn't clip it, I think it would have rolled to the wall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it rolls pretty far. It's bad play. That sucks. I love how sucks, pumped up I, Soto I think- was, even though he got thrown out. Oh, that was awesome. Soto, I, I've never seen someone celebrating so much as they're about to be tagged out. He that was, was pretty he, cool. He was celebrating before he got tagged out. Yeah, I know. But, that but was, that's a strategy in baseball. Um, yeah. So if you don't know that, people are like, why do you get tagged out? What bad base running? Yo, that third run yeah. is so much more important than him. So if he can bait them to try and get him out, that secures Rendon being a safe passage home. So they yeah. call it baiting them. Chase Hudley or Chase Headley used to talk about it a lot for the Yankees. Like you got to bait them so they don't even think about throwing home, and then you just got to get in a rundown long enough so that run at home counts, and it's a strategy. So that's probably why he didn't care. Yeah, I I think there I think that run was gonna score anyways, but I'd, Soto ensured it. Um, I I, I do yeah, as well, it, but it is a strategy that some people might not realize. I think the other thing with Gresham, I, I mean, that was a deep single. It was hit pretty hard. He's he's not going to throw out the runner from at second. There was a pinch runner. So, I mean, the game was going to be tied anyways. Mm-hmm. So, I think that's the other thing where it's not like if, if him fielding that and throwing it could have prevented them from tying it, I think it looks so much worse. But it, it would have at least been a tied game. Instead, it gives up the run and... Uh, brutal. Brutal. He's apparently crying and stuff like that. But all right, that wraps up the first half of the show. Woo! The NL Wildcard Recap. Let's move on. To the game coming up, Jake, the AL wild card, the Tampa Bay Rays have found themselves in Oakland, California for a game at the Coliseum. 
Uh, this is an, such an interesting matchup. Two teams with shitty stadiums, a low payroll, and a pitching strategy that is a lot of bullpen and mixing and matching, yet they're both going with traditional starters. Yeah, uh, Jim, what well, you just said, uh, someone from the New York Times, who gets paid to be a writer? Kepner called them. They're cousins from the different, the opposite coasts. Um, they're, they're, they're both frugal with their budget, but they both are like well-run organizations at this point. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's fun that they're going with their guns. Sean Manaya, Manaya versus Charlie Morton. <laughs> Whatever we say, it'll be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Charlie Morton. I know I got that one right. Nailed it. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's good. Uh, I mean, we'll, let's just dive right in, Jake. I have some notes here. I mean, okay. do, you have a, do you have any gut feelings about this, I, I guess, first? Well, my, my first gut question I was going to send to you, and it's kind of the Scherzer debate. Do you, th- do you think any of these teams have that Scherzer leash? Like, do you think either of these starting pitchers will be allowed to give up three runs in the first two innings? Yep. Okay. Both of them? No, uh, I think Charlie Morton will. Yeah, I think Morton has more leash than Manaya, right? He's been a top three pitcher in the American yeah. League. He's going to get Cy Young votes. Yeah. So Manaya is coming off injury. Um, and he was a coin flip anyways with fires. fires. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so just a little like go even zoom out even more. These two teams have played each other seven go- seven times. They were all back in June, mid-June, Jake, or late June. Oakland won the first series in Tampa. They took two of three. Then they had a four-game set in Oakland that they split. Um, None of them were like – all of them were pretty close games. There was one eight-to-two game, but the rest were pretty close. Oakland had a walk-off at the Coliseum against the Rays at some point. So that's such a different animal, though. I mean, like you don't know what was going on. You don't know who was injured. You don't know – what the rest schedule called for like you know, it's just such a different animal so i don't i actually don't put much stock into head to head unless it's glaring yeah and it's it postseason baseball is a different sport i mean you can almost say it about any sport but i mean when <laughs> when the pitchers would throw ball one in the count last night and it'd be one and oh you'd hear the crowd like yes let's, oh yeah. we I, got him we got this fucker um <laughs> It's it's a totally different sport. It's it's awesome. I like both of them, but playoff baseball, I you can't do playoff baseball for 162. You'd kill yourself. <laughs> you'd, you'd kill yourself. Yeah. It's um. So yeah, I I don't I don't hold too much merit with that. Are you shocked, uh, Manaya? Manaya? Fuck! It's gonna drive me crazy. I'm not. Um. He has been so good. Um. That I I like it. And um, I I like fires coming out of the pin better than Manaya too. I I don't. I'll I'll be honest with you guys. I don't have a ton of reasoning behind it. I don't um, think he's gonna come out of the pen. Oh really? You think they're gonna full save him? Uh, I was reading a bunch of articles this morning, and it seems like they they got a bullpen that they like. They do. They very much do. I think. Uh, I think Puck. you have to come in all hands on deck in case it is, you know, the second inning and Manaya's walk in or whatever he's doing. But um, also coming off the injury, I don't think you want you want Manaya doing his normal routine and getting loose and all that stuff. Um, so I like it. Um, I I'd, I'd have to get the uh, get some raise righty lefty split stuff going on. Um, but I I don't know. They they pick their guy and roll with it. Um, I'm I, Jim. I'm starting to, I'm starting to think this is going to be so much bullpen. I'm starting to think Morton's not going to have leash either. Yeah, I mean you got a lot of bullpen. You got Jesus. I mean Morton, Snell, Glasno. Never mind the normal Rays pen. Yeah, I don't know how much Snell and Glasno are going to come in. I think they like their like real pen guys to get them through this. Ooh, I I guess that's my first storyline then because I think. I, you don't you don't want to be the Rays and go down not using Glasno and Snell, you know. Like Liam Hendricks is can get six outs if they want him to. 
yeah, I don't love them for six out. I, I like them. I love them for three. I don't like them for six. I agree with you, but they might ask them for six. But I do agree yeah. that you need to just do three. Soria's going to get in there. Petit's going to get in there. I believe, um, I believe like Puck is going to get in there. Yeah. Um, and then they have like Jesus Lazardo. Like, I think they like a lot of those guys. So maybe if, if Manai is terrible, then Fires comes in. But I think they're going to hope to get five in bullpen or four in bullpen. On both, on both sides. Tampa Bay, I mean, they have a huge bullpen. Yeah. Like, of crazy talent. I don't, I just don't know. I, I, for me, if I was a Rays fan, and dude, how good Glasnow has been. If you want to save one for extra innings, if you want to make Snell your Patrick Corbin from yesterday, that you're only going to use him if you need him in extra innings, I'm fine with that. But I think I need two or three on deck, and especially Glasnow, dude. When he's, when he's right, that dude's straight unhittable. Um, straight unhittable. So I, I don't know. I think I like... I like Morton, Morton Glasnow. Um, and yeah, you're probably right. The A's probably want to dodge fires, but I think you still have to have them ready, right? Maybe, yeah. Want to know something cool about uh, Sean Mania? I need to know it. He's come back from injury on September 1st. He made five starts, right? And he, they've all been good. That's what Bob Belvin said. They're like, uh, every Mania start has been good. Like, fires has been our rock, and he's really good at home. But he's had a couple starts that are blips. Manaya hasn't had a blip yet. But I was looking at his game log, and in the five games Sean Manaya pitched for the A's, he has zero runs in the first four innings, Jake. All of them come in the fifth and sixth. So he's been strong right out the gates. And if they get four out of them, they may be like, great. Yeah. That's all we wanted, and he hasn't given up a run in the four, in the first, second, third, or fourth yet. So that's pretty good. And none of the Rays have faced him. Darno that, is that's two what for I was going to say, Jim. I think that's a huge factor. Darno's two for two. Kiermaier's one for three, and Avisel Garcia's one for three. And those three guys are the only people with that bats. So watch out for Darno. He's two for two with the walk. But um, and I I think. I think what's kind of interesting too, Jim, is that the the Rays' best player, if you're not familiar with Austin Meadows, he's an awesome ball player. And the fact that they got Meadows and Glasnow for Chris Archer is sinful and will be work, looked at as one of the worst trades of all time. But anyways, I, I think with the lefty, Meadows' numbers are a lot worse. His OPS is down about 130 points against lefties. His on-base percentage is 316. So you're neutralizing Meadows um, and G-Man Choi a little bit, who's been really solid for them lately. And he was he was on that postseason picture that went viral, which is pretty funny for us as Yankees fans, just because he was kind of like, <laughs> he was like a, you're going to be off the 40, man. We can't keep you, dude. <laughs> um, so it, it's kind of funny that he's he's been getting that love. But I think the Rays... They have a lot of like solid righty hitters. Like Avisail Garcia, you mentioned him. He's going to give you a good at bat. Darno has had a really solid season. Tommy Fan. So um, I think it is the lesser of the two evils, and you wonder if that factored into the decision. I don't know. Yeah. The Rays are like split proof because they just use their guys crazily. Right. Like their lineup changed with Manaya. Like you're going to see Fan, Meadows, Garcia. You're probably going to see Aguilar over Choi. Yeah, the righty. Uh, yeah, that's a great. That's a crazy point. Wendell um, Brasso, maybe Kiermaier will be in there. He's a lefty, yeah. but he's in there for his defense. Yeah, um, Adamus. So you see a lot of righties, and that may change the way Oakland uses their pen, and they might bring in a lot of their righty relievers right away, because like if they have to go to the pen early, it might be well, let's bring in a righty reliever for one inning to make them either pinch hit way before they wanted to or just because they got righties batting. And it's it's a good point, Jim, because in a game like this, you're you're going to see guys pinch hitting. It's do or die. Uh, the Rays kind of do that all year. Um, where the A's, I mean, they have their dudes. Their, their one through five, one through six is pretty locked in. Um, 
And and let's be honest, I feel like we're tiptoeing around it a little bit. The the A's are a lot more talented. I mean, Matt Olson, there's an argument that he's one of the best first basemen in baseball. Matt Chapman, there's an argument he's one of the best third basemen in, in baseball. Marcus Simeon, he's going to get MVP votes. Um, th- these Those guys are crazy talented. Um, never mind the year that someone like Mark Canna has had. Um, just their, their lineup is deeper in... How how much do you think the stadium's a factor tonight, Jimmy? Well, there's the stadium itself and the loudness and the drums and the Venezuelas and stuff like that. But there's also the Rays are coming off an exhausting trip, Jake. They they had to play the Yankees, Boston, the Dodgers down the stretch. Then they had to fly to Toronto to close out their season. Then they had to fly all the way out to Oakland. So they're kind of on like this whirlwind trip where they haven't seen home or regular routine in a while. That could play a factor. My thing is, Oakland is deeper, like you said. They have a top four. Like, if Charlie Morton needs to just shut down that top four, Simeon, uh, Chapman, Olsen, Kana, he needs to shut them down. Because they are the dudes. They all have wild card experience from last year. One game, but... It was at Yankee Stadium, so they have the mindset of like, okay, this is a little, this is what we need to have, has to happen and shit like that. And they have, they all have at bats versus Morton because Oakland was played the Houston, and Morton was on Houston for a while. So like right. Simeon has a three fifty seven batting average against Morton. Profar has a three sixty four. Olson has a three thirty three. These are all in fifteen plus plate appearances. Chris Davis has a bad batting average, but he's got two home runs versus Morton. And Matt Chapman has a 294 on base percentage, 200 batting average. But their top five dudes have all had 15 plus plate appearances against Charlie Morton. So it's kind of it, it, on one side of the ball, it's a lot of experience. Oakland has experience in the postseason in, in, in a one game wild card, super small. They have experience against, the, against Charlie Morton, right? They're the home team. And on the other side, you have a bunch of Rays with no experience. I mean, Pham, Garcia, and Darno are the only guys with postseason play before. You got Meadows, um, all the young guys, dude. Wendell, Brasso, even Kiermaier doesn't have a postseason at bat. And they've never seen Manaya, And they have to fly. So a lot of like... The stats and the anecdotes kind of lead to Oakland being good. Manaya has no experience, though, on Oakland's side. This is his first playoff start ever, and that's a big dude to have no experience. So it's interesting. Yeah, it does feel like you, you mentioned experience, but at the same time, like some of the games like uh, A.J. Puck, uh, Lazardo, um The A's I, pitching I, is all new. The Rays yeah, lineup like the, is all new. If the A's lose this game, it's going to be because uh, their young pitchers couldn't handle the stage. Um, that being said, I, I, the A's are the favorite in this game, uh, home field, and I think talent-wise. And I, I think yesterday's game, we said the Nationals were the favorite, but the, the thing that was literally the wild card was they were just such contrasting styles. And we saw that. I mean, you know, the... Milwaukee threw Woodruff out there and it was do or die for him basically every pitch and he was a stud the whole way through. Scherzer got knocked around. It ended up coming around full circle later in the game against Hayter. These, um, like uh, the coastal cousins or, or whatever that phrase was, but it just feels like the A's are the better team. I, I like the A's more tonight than I liked the Nationals yesterday. And I mean, again, Josh Hader was in with the lead, so that doesn't mean too much. Um, but I, I think it, the, I, I'm trying to, what, what's the Rays storyline if the Rays win this game? Uh, I think this game may be like one nothing through eight innings. Okay. I think it may be like a two nothing win and it's maybe early runs. And then that's like the game. Yeah. And the Rays can win a game like that easily. Yeah. So it's really Morton versus the top four for me. Like that's, I think, the biggest matchup. Can Morton shut down the top four two? I don't know if they'll ask him to do it three times, but. 
Let's see. Uh, and then o- Oakland's rookie pitching, like that dude, Puck, he's been good. He is green. So, oh, speaking of, dude, Oakland's wearing the Kelly Green uniforms. Oh, wow. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Don't don't even come to the stadium, Tampa. For real. I, I'm rooting for the Oakland in the same reason I rooted for the Nationals last night. I think it leads to a better divisional series. And, Jim, that's kind of the thing that just went through my head. I, I mean, I mentioned uh, Simeon Olsen, Ch- Chapman. I mean, those those guys are absolute studs. I haven't mentioned Ramon Liriano. I, I absolutely love the way that dude plays. Ho- hopefully he's in the lineup today. Um, but, yeah, I, the, the A's got Frankie Montes back off of his suspension um, with fires. And if Manaya shoves today... Um, that's a guy that you look at as almost a bona fide ace for them. Uh, so the Wait, A's could be a real scary team. Montes can't pitch in the postseason, though. I thought if you get suspended, you're in, uh, ineligible. Like Cano was ineligible when he got suspended for the postseason. That that may be right. I just I know they they made a big deal of it when he came back and he pitched in one of the last regular season games, but that uh that would seem right. Yeah. Well. So yeah, he's he's not on the postseason. Excuse me. So yeah. okay, the A's are terrible. Go Rays. <laughs> All right, that ends this one. Thank you guys very much for listening. Like we said, we're gonna be doing these. They're available on YouTube after we record it. Um, they're available on Patreon as we record it. You can l- listen live and and have some input in the chat and shit like that. Leave a review if you listen on the podcast app. We appreciate it. We're gonna be every day recapping the games that happened the day before, talking about the ones that are coming up. Uh, It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Subscribe, rate, review, and all that jazz. Mike Rotano with the music today. And always, we'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the baseball. Bye.